But there's another character who refuses to leave the story. This is Hitler in September 1923 on his very first visit to Bayreuth. He'd come to pay his respects at the master's tomb and to meet the British-born writer Houston Stewart Chamberlain. Chamberlain was a racist who championed Aryan supremacy and vilified the Jews. He was also an influential member of the Wagner household through marriage to the composer's daughter. Long before he became chancellor, Hitler was embraced by some in Bayreuth with open arms. It wasn't a question of the Wagner family and Bayreuth welcoming Hitler because, in a sort of cowardly custard fashion, he was the great leader of Germany and they didn't dare offend him. Quite the opposite. They actually pushed him forward. They supported him from a very early age. 1923 was just a few years after the First World War when Hitler was a, a nobody. He was a, a corporal who'd left the front and come to join the turmoil of uh, post-war Germany. But in fact, they saw in him, Houston Stuart Chamberlain, Wagner's son-in-law, they saw in Hitler a kind of Parsifal who had uh, become the shining knight to liberate Germany and lead it forward into a grand new age, as many people much later also saw Hitler. After Hitler became chancellor in 1933, he became a patron of the festival. Performances continued here even during the Second World War. It's impossible to come to Bayreuth without having to confront the issue of that window, really. Because out of that window peered one Adolf Hitler some years ago. He came to Bayreuth to enjoy the performances of his favourite dramatist composer, my favourite dramatist composer, Richard Wagner. Wagner's music and reputation has suffered partly because the Nazis loved and perverted that music. Certainly, in my opinion, they perverted it to their hideous ideology. But also Wagner has suffered because his descendants, his family, seemed to welcome Hitler, in the case of his daughter-in-law Winifred, who was British, actually to revere Hitler. And so this is one of the reasons that Wagner's music and Bayreuth itself are tainted, stained in some people's opinion. There are many who shun the Green Hill because of what happened here in the 1930s and 40s. But now, after years of fudging the issue, it looks as if Bayreuth is starting to square up to its past. The Wagner sisters want an independent investigation into their family's links with Hitler. And the Nazi period is even being addressed on the Bayreuth stage itself. Parsifal is Wagner's final opera, based on the Arthurian legend of the Holy Grail. Norwegian director Stefan Herheim has updated the action, which now plays out against the backdrop of recent events in German history. For the first time in a generation, there will be swastikas on show at Bayreuth. Swastikas and the Nazis. It's pretty brave, isn't it? It's fantastic. 
So it's kind of this, this, these refugees are an addition to last year. Right. So that's why we're spending time now with them. Oh, right. It's all new, but we somehow got permission to add this that's, idea. That's brilliant. I know Catherine is wanting to confront that history yes, by I know. more full on, which I think is a really good idea. Yeah, there might be an exhibition in Vanford, I believe. Imagine. It will take more than one daring production to make amends for the past. But what better way of healing the wound than through the music itself? My head tells me I'm ready to take my seat for the opening night of the festival. But my heart still has some catching up to do. And there's one more person I need to hear from. In London, I'm meeting Anita Lasker Walfisch. When she was 18 years old, she became a prisoner at Auschwitz, where some of my own relatives were also held and killed. She's a cellist whose talent for music probably saved her life when she was recruited into the inmates' orchestra at the camp. There was nobody there who played the cello. There was, had been somebody there who died. Mm. I don't know what would have happened if they still had had a cello, then I wouldn't have been so important. And you know, I mean, I had typhus like everybody. I was half dead in the Revere, as it was called, you know, sort of yes. the sick bay. I remember two Germans standing in front of my bed. We had to all get up and march naked in front of the people who would say yes or no. In the Revere. Meaning that you're too sick to live. Too sick to live, so you go, or you survive. And I can, I can. That is something that is engraved in my memory. This is the cellist, and they walked on. So there was one particular piece you played under extraordinary. Circumstances. Well, I mean that is sort of worth mentioning that actually uh, Dr. Mengele, the famous uh, doctor who was interested in experiments on twins after he's probably done a selection or God knows what he's done, came into the block and he wanted to hear the Schumann's Träumerei. And that was on my repertoire, so Anita, go on, play the Träumerei, which I did. The one big thing was always uh, never get eye contact with the Germans, oh, really? if possible. Because the moment you get eye contact, you feel you're being seen. Have you played it since then? This grandson plays it with pleasure. <laughs> really? Yeah. And you, you don't mind? Is, no, I don't mind. You don't? So I find music is not salad for no. me by, any, by anything. Absolutely. I mean, how much do we grant the Germans in the quest of destroying everything? I mean, music is holy for me, you know. Yes. It's not, that's above everything. Yes, they didn't destroy the music, no. did they? No, no, no. People have this idea that in the death camps that Wagner was playing in the background all the time, as it were. I'm here talking to you as a survivor of one of the death camps, the most famous of them all, the, the, the dreaded and horrific Auschwitz. Well, we certainly didn't play Wagner. You did not? No, we didn't play Wagner. First of all, you must realize what this band, or capella, as we used to call it, consisted of. You couldn't have played Wagner if you tried. Right, Wagner does demand a big orchestra. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and, you know, blowing instruments. I, I can't speak for the other camps, but uh, I don't think Wagner was particularly played. When I was a boy, I, you know, if I played Wagner at the top of the house loudly, yeah. from a Jewish family, Wagner, must I play that? And if your children played Wagner, at the, you know, in the attic here and loudly, would you think they were somehow... Uh, am I betraying my Jewishness by playing Wagner and then think, liking him? I think everybody has to, has to come to terms by themselves. I would never forbid anybody to listen to Wagner. If it was the music without the, the drama, uh, one wouldn't probably argue with it. But apart from the fact, I would never have the patience to sit for five hours and listen to so much noise. <laughs> you know, I know you, you love it, but... Uh, I do. What happens to you when you sit there for five hours? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm taken into a world of heightened emotion and psychological depth and 
It's, it's, hmm. it, it's really extraordinary. I, I find that every time I see a Wagner piece, a music drama, as he mm. would call it, an opera is the easiest way to call it, it's as if it's absolutely new. So although they are very long, and I understand why five hours, you know, it seems like a long time with people singing and standing in one place. Screaming! Singing and singing, <laughs> or screaming sometimes. And yet, because of what the music does underneath with the drama, it's as if it's an enormous con conversation and your mind goes on a journey of connecting all kinds of emotional states and all kinds of philosophical thoughts. I mean, I know it sounds so pretentious. I'm fully aware of how no, 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 embarrassing it can be to try and explain. Um, Why do you have to listen to Wagner and Bayreuth, which is so somehow symbolic for everything terrible yes. that has happened? And Why can't you just sit at home and listen to the record? It's a very good question. I think I've spent my life listening to the, to the records and loving it. I've never been to Bayreuth. Wagner built the theatre specifically for it, and I suppose it's a... It's a way of completing a s part of the sort of my life with Wagner as it's been. Um, maybe I'll be disappointed. Well, you tell me when you come back what you felt like in there in the on the shrine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um. Oh gosh, you've got me worried now. I mean, it is. <laughs> I, you know, I'm sorry, I no, no. It's right. You should. I, I want. I embarked on this whole project. Uh, I was kidding myself with an open mind, but I kind of thought, really, I will. I'll just cruise through this, and I know people will put contrary points of view to me and say, well, yes, but think, and I'll, I've already got the answers, and I know why Wagner is the greatest genius who ever lived, and I don't need anyone to tell me to give any more pause to that than I already have. But there is much in what you say. So do you think, do you think I shouldn't go to Bayreuth? Do you think it's... I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you any advice, Stephen, that you have to do that. <laughs> you have to do that. You're quite right. Yeah. But I should and think... I can't... No, no, I think, why not? I mean, yeah. maybe you'll decide never again, but you'll have experienced it. This remarkable plot of ground will never be a neutral place, of course. For some, it's a shrine to one of the world's great geniuses. For others, it's a tainted reminder of dark days in Germany's past. Even this memorial bust was created by Hitler's favorite sculptor. But Wagner's music is bigger and better than Hitler ever imagined it to be. And Bayreuth, the theater Wagner dreamed of creating for so long, is also redeemed by that fact. Which is why I'm not prepared to surrender either of them to him. Well, here it is. In my hand, one of the most valuable pieces of paper in the world of culture. One thing I'd leave with is this thought. If you've never heard the music of Richard Wagner, if you've never encountered his dramas, I would urge you, because we're only on this planet once, to give it a try. I still believe, as firmly as I believe anything, that his work is important and is on the side of the angels. It is fundamentally good.